people youtube right here the malik aaron aaron i'm sorry world of youtube forgot uh it's been a long day I had to take an act test for the fourth time can't say anything else about it because they're going to be coming after me kind of like how nintendo comes after people who you know do like nintendo videos right so can't do that so before I get to review right here, there's no matches, it's just review. Matches will come, don't worry. I got another bag from McKay's. It looks like it's from Walmart, but they use other stores' bags because why not? With the McKay's again, got a ton of stuff for a cheap price, so please, uh, if you don't want to spend on like expensive things, you just want to buy movies, they have thousands of them. You can go to McKay's, it's a great place, but the first time I show off the movies I have, it's like eight of them in here. They're all different from each other. First, I think I already showed you, I got this sequel, a Hellboy, a uh, Hellboy 2 Golden Army. I found the original, and I was so happy. And yes, I know this movie is great and i will see the reboot when it comes out um 2019 and yeah i mean this is guillermo del toro's like well this is like the movie this is like before pan's labyrinth i think he did blade 2 before this this is the movie that really got him that mainstream cred like you know in the internet fandom geek them world whatever it got him a lot of, you know, success and a lot of, you know, fans. So that's good. Next, a movie back to a classic, one of the greatest comedies ever made. Can't really see the title, but Dodgeball, a true underdog story. This movie is one of those movies I can just watch over and over and over again and never get bored. It is that good. And yeah, Ben Stiller, man, his character, <laughs> jeez, he is something. Also, this movie has an awesome cameo by Chuck Norris, which is always a plus. So, yeah, this movie's fantastic. Next is a kid's movie. Because I need kid's movies. We need variety. We can't have just one genre, because that'd be boring. It's over the hedge. I saw this and I was like, you know what? I like this movie. Shame it didn't get a sequel because it didn't make that much money. It didn't reach that Shrek benchmark. So it was kind of forgotten about. But I'm going to try to bring it back. If the internet can bring B movie back, we can bring this back. Or well, at least I'm going to try, you know. Wow. So that's over the hedge. <laughs> this movie, boy. So people, some of you out there are going to be disappointed in me for my taste in film, but Alien vs. Predator Requiem. Oh my gosh. A movie that is, this is the darkest movie ever made. Now I'm not talking about tone, I'm talking about lighting. It's so dark, you can barely see anything. And it's just, it's so bad, but I've seen it so many times on TV, and when I saw it in McKay's, I just had to buy it. Because it's pretty hilarious. So, that's AVP reference. Next stuff, remake. 2010 Karate Kid. I know remakes get a really bad rap, especially now. But this is actually, I think, one of the better remakes to, you know, come out of recent memory. I mean, Jane Smith, yes, his tweets, although they are amazing, they are still really stupid. <laughs> but before all this, you know, he was in this movie. I think he did a decent job. I mean, Jackie Chan playing, you know, a Mr. Miyagi uh, character. Her, I mean, that's great. And yes, I know. He taught him Kung Fu. Which means this should be called the Kung Fu Kid, but that just does not click as well as the Karate Kid. So, sorry. That's Karate Kid. 
Next up, Tom Cruise. I realize I lack a lot of Tom Cruise movies, so I have to get one. I got The Last Samurai. And, oh. If this was released today, it would cause such a firestorm. I mean, it would have been Matt Damon, The Great Wall levels of bad. But this was 2003. A simpler time. <laughs> Not today, so. Uh, I mean, yeah. I heard, like, the action scenes are really good in this movie. So, yeah. That should be interesting. Now, same as AVP Rec Room. I've seen this movie so many times. Because it's just so stupid. That I, I just enjoy it. Norbit, sue me. I I like this movie. It's dumb. It's beyond stupid. But it's just, it's so watchable. I don't understand why, but it just is. You just turn on TV, this comes up, and then you just don't touch the remote anymore. You just watch it. I don't know why I do it, but I just do. I guess it's because of the characters, or the you know the ridiculous story. I don't know. It's Weird. Now, it's the last one. Although it was very successful, it was incredibly controversial. You all know if you've been with my channel since day one, you know I don't stray from controversial uh, movies. I mean, I've done Borat. I've done Team America. I have South Park. South Park, bigger, longer, uncut in my collection. Here, ring at some high level controversy. That is the biggest rated R movie in American history, at least in the States. The Passion of the Christ. Directed by Mel Gibbs. Yes, I thought about it long and hard if I wanted to review it, and I decided that I will. Because... This movie just created such a firestorm when it came out. Like, it's hard, like, nothing could come close to it. I mean, it is, like, the biggest movie of its genre. And its genre, the only other big movies that have, are there are, like, the Narnia movies. And those fell off a cliff after that first movie. So, this is the biggest. And Mel Gibson... I mean, I, this is like the first Mel Gibson directed movie I have. I don't think I have any movie made by Mel Gibson, which is weird. I don't have Braveheart. I don't have Lethal Weapon series. I heard they're making a fifth one. Uh, don't have Apocalypto. Don't have any of those. Don't even have Hacksaw Ridge. I want to get it, but I just haven't yet. So, yeah. Passion of the Christ. <laughs> Gonna be real interesting to talk about. Next, this last one, I know is trust me, it's almost over. It's a game. I've been looking for this game so long, but I finally found it. After at least two years of, of hunting and searching, and avoiding going on the internet, I found well, at least one of the two games. So I'm halfway complete with my quest. WWF Raw. But the original Xbox. I know this game sucks, <laughs> but I kind of just had to get it because, I don't know, I'm just curious. I have the SmackDown games, I have the Day of Reckoning games, now I'm in the Raw games because WWF gets Raw on the Xbox and whatnot, so I'll probably play this sometime. So that's all the stuff here, it's a lot. Very unique. So yeah. Review time. Sorry for that long, long stuff. SpongeBob movie. Sponge out of water. Now, as you all know, I adore the first SpongeBob movie. It's a blast. It's incredibly watchable. You know, you can just watch it and just never get bored. It's great. Uh, but then the show took a decline for the worst. Because Steven Hillenburg, uh, he uh, 
left the show, or like he had a lesser, be yeah, more accurate, he had a lesser role than he once did. So yeah, I know dude to come in, handle it, and the show just went downhill. I mean, we had stuff like Atlantis, Square Pantis, ew, ugh. Uh, what was it? Uh, that tenth anniversary special, Truth. I believe Truth or Square. Oh my gosh, that was bad. Um, that one was really bad. But recently, it's been on the you know, on the uprise. They had those nice little uh, stop motion uh, specials. They had a Christmas one, and they had a, recently had a Halloween one. I heard the TV show is better. I haven't watched it since like 2010, so that was a long time ago. But I've heard it's getting better. And one episode was like really well received. It was called Mimic Madness, so I might have to watch that just to see how good it really is. But anyway, when I first saw the trailer for this movie, I hated it. I despised it. I wanted it to burn because they... Uh, they did the typical, we're gonna take 2D characters and make them 3D characters. And that's what they did. And although, they actually look really good in 3D. They decided to go the extra mile and make them superheroes. Because superheroes are the big thing nowadays. With Marvel, DC, Fox, Sony. I know there's that new anime Spider-Man movie. I just saw the trailer for that. And it looks very interesting, so maybe I'll talk about it. Who knows? But anywho, I thought this movie was going to be a disaster. Then I found out. Then, actually before that, the movie became a massive hit. And I was just like, how? Why? I don't get it. Because <laughs> I thought Spongebob had his popularity had died down, but no, it went up. It went up. Like a rocket. It was weird. I guess because they have all that Spongebob merchandise around the world. So I guess that counts for something. So, after a couple months, when it came out on DVD, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to buy it. And I'm going to find out for myself if it's really as good as everybody's making it out to be. So I did it, bought it, watched it, and I was like... It's pretty good. One of my major complaints about this movie was how it was mismarketed. It did the Godzilla uh, 2014 where um, it teased. like Remember like in the Godzilla 2014 movie where the trailers looked so epic because it was going to be all about Godzilla. And it was like, oh my gosh. And then you see the movie and it's like, where is he? And you're like, oh, there he is. He's barely in there, but when he is in there, it's awesome. So, it's kind of like that, where the marketing dominated with this, but in actuality, it was just like a high-budget cartoon episode, you know, of Spongebob. The Spongebob episode, just longer and a much bigger budget. So, that actually surprised me, because 2D needs to make a comeback. I mean... No offense to 3D animation, I mean, it's really good, but we need variety. We need changes, okay? We only have so many 3D animated movies for like, well, it'll never get stale. I mean, if it did, there'd be no more, but they keep making them, so. Whatever. So the plot is that uh, you got uh, a pirate, uh, Antonio Banderas. He plays Burger Beard. Great name. And uh, what he uh, does is that he's on like this island. You know, the island that's in the beginning of the show, you know, in, in the intro. is that island. He finds a, uh, I don't know, was it a book? I think it was, but it was a book. When he writes stuff in it, and whatever he writes stuff in it, it comes true. Right? It's easy enough. So, down Bikini Bottom. It's like a typical Spongebob episode. 
Plankton just goes on a full-blown rampage. He pulls the Eggman and Sonic Forces. He just loses it. He goes all out as big old robots. And it's literally like the way they do it. It's like like a call, like Call of Duty. Just like a bunch of, you know, shooting, destruction. There are no loot crates falling from the sky, thankfully. So they do all that. There's some funny moments. Uh and, uh, Spongebob and Plankton, you know, uh, see, uh, they're trying out to get control of the Krabby Patty secret formula, the famous one that Plankton won once, then it failed, so, but what, while they're fighting for it, it just disappears, poof, gone, everybody blames Plankton, but Spongebob was there, he saw the whole thing, he tries to tell everybody it wasn't him! It disappeared, but no one listened to him because Plankton's Plankton. So Spongebob goes with Plankton, and then they're both... Well, I guess you could say... Evil or criminals. I don't know. And then the whole town goes into anarchy because you can't... They can't live without their Krabby Patties. So it goes to complete anarchy, complete chaos. Everyone looks like they belong in a Mad Max film. So Spongebob and Plankton, uh, they talk about teamwork, which was awfully familiar to the fun song, my ad. So in order to figure out, okay, this, all right, this is where the movie gets weird. It goes like someone just like, took a bunch of, just smoked a bunch of weed, took a bunch of cocaine, and they were just like, I'm gonna make a Spongebob movie. I'm gonna make it my way. That's what it sounds like, and you're about to find out. Spongebob and Plankton decide, you know, let's build a time machine. And, you know, they do that. Do a whole little montage. They go back, and the way they do it, it just looks trippy. Real trippy. Like, we just, everybody in the audience just took some acid. So, they get back in time. They stop the original Spongebob and um, Plankton. It's it, it gets real crazy from there. I'm not going to spoil it. Then, Spongebob and Plankton, somehow, someway, they go to, like, this weird area where you have this Dolphin. Bubble the Dolphin. No, that was what his name. Yeah, Bubbles the Dolphin. I believe that was his name, yeah. This is the Dolphin. This... Who has, I think, looks like an Illuminati symbol. That's what it looks like to me, so... I don't even know anymore. So he gives them, like, you know, help, because they have... The, this uh, secret formula is on land, you know, in live action land. And Burger Beer and Tony Baderas uses it to an advantage and makes his own custom, I guess you could say, sort of like a big old food truck about, you know, his Krabby Patties and it's making a lot of money. So SpongeBob and his friends. And there was a really funny line where the whole town of Bikini Bonham. Like, um, uh, it's coming up there, and then they realize it's on the surface, and then one of the guys is just like, Alright, I'll support the characters. Let's go back. And I'm like, yeah, that was great. That was fantastic. So, Spongebob, uh, Patrick, Sandy, Miss Krabs, uh, Squidward, <laughs> and Plankton. They go above surface to 3D land. Now they got this magical power of bubbles where they can now breathe on land. And so they do that. And there's some more hijinks, some more funny moments. And the burger beer is just like, nope, you're not you're not getting away. Mainly because they're small the way they should be. And then they're like on Pelican Island. And so Spongebob uh, uses, yeah, finds a pen, and he uses Squidward for it. I'm not going to say how, because it's kind of gross. And then they write themselves to be superheroes, the ones you see on the cover right here. Patrick's 
power is so hilarious. He has the power of like ice cream, and you think it's gonna be epic, and then it's just not. And you're like, wow, what a waste. The Sandy turns into a live action, a big old live action squirrel. It's terrifying. Squidward, um, it's just, well, <laughs> it is a scene in the movie, you're gonna have to watch for yourself. Mr. Krabs is a robot. Plankton has just become the Hulk straight up. And then all of them, they fight Antonio Banderas. It's a big old action scene. Funny moments again. They win, of course. They go back to too late to 2D land. Everything's all fine, whatnot. And then roll credit. So this movie is very interesting, to say the least. But it's very entertaining, very enjoyable. It's, uh, the characters, some people complain about how the characters are in the show, how Patrick is so just unlikable, how Mr. Krabs is unlikable, how everyone just tortures Squidward, how Sandy is just a science freak, and whatnot. But here, they actually act like they're old characters. The characters are everybody liked. Patrick was not being a jerk, and said he was actually being funny. And you know, everyone else just acted like the way they used to, which is good. The CGI is really good, especially with like SpongeBob and Friends. Looks great. The plot is so insane. You have to watch for yourself in order to really understand it. And yeah, that's SpongeBob movie, Sponge Out of Water. And I'm going to give it. Um, eight, yeah, eight, eight out of ten. Very solid movie. If you don't have anything to do, or if you used to be a fan of SpongeBob, please watch this. It might help you, you know, make you go like, "Wow, SpongeBob's not terrible anymore." So yeah, you go do that. Next review is a movie made famous by its marketing and not in the misleading type of way, more like in the secretive type of way. And I'm talking about Cloverfield. I did 10 Cloverfield Lane. I was on my first reviews. Ugh, that was so long ago. Now <coughs> we're doing the predecessor, I guess. Next review, so look out for that. So make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, I'll see you all next time. And I am out.